Ready? Two. Hello, is this working okay? And just going to share this on a couple of platforms. And there we go. All right. Cool. I'm just going to go ahead and share this really quick um, on a couple social media things, and we'll get started in just a moment. There we go. All right. So that is now shared um, and getting all of this set up and all right, cool. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Dan, is everything sounding okay? Can you tell me if this is working all right? Those of you who have logged in, would you mind leave in a comment and let me know if everything's coming out okay. Also just say hello. Oh yay, oh yay, cool, hey Nick. Awesome, great guys, cool. 10 out of 10, you're fun, okay. Oh, this is great. Oh, Sam. Hi, you. What does that mean? <laughs> and Roy! Oh my goodness. Yay. Oh, this is so fun. Yay. Great. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Hi, Violet. <laughs> awesome. Great. Um, I'm just going to play a little bit real quick um, while we let some other folks kind of log in. And, oh, hey, Dimitri, awesome. Oh, this is great. Yeah, um, I'm gonna play a little bit for you guys um, just to kind of let everybody kind of log in and get situated and stuff. So um, yeah, I'm just gonna do uh, my favorite little legato warm up as many of you have already done. Hey, Kira, awesome, cool. So I'm gonna do this really quick. Um, I actually posted um, a video of this yesterday, and I'm guessing most of you have probably seen it already, but um, but yeah, I just kind of need to play a few notes, so one sec. <laughs> We've got, looks like we've got a good crowd um, for my small channel um, logged in now and watching. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank all of you guys for tuning in and checking out my very first live stream ever. Um, and I was mainly inspired to do this because <clears throat> um, I've been getting a lot of comments and questions lately about breathing and air support 
And um, actually, I've gotten a lot of questions about it, like not just recently, but a, a lot of questions like over time um, on my channel. And to be honest, it's really hard to teach air support over a video um, and not actually get to work with um, the student or person who um, who is you know, wanting to improve their air support. And I, in my opinion, it's mainly because everybody is a little different. Um, you know, some people push too hard. Some people, um, you know, will kind of tighten up their chest or their throat, um, which in turn kind of, oh, hey, Eileen, <laughs> um, which kind of in turn um, will cause, you know, a bunch of other problems. So um, I'm just going to kind of, uh, Let's see. Oh yeah, get your clarinets out. Yeah, um, yeah. And if you guys, okay, I'm gonna be like a, a bad person right now and tell you all to get straws if you have them. Um, you know, this is like one of the last plastic straws I own. So um, yeah, anyway, so if you have a straw, go get it. Um, those of you who have any of these, <laughs> poor turtles, yeah, I know. Um, any of you guys who have any of these things too, um, will be using some of that at some point too. But if not, that's totally fine. Um, the straw will work just fine. Um, yeah, so let's see. Anyway, so um, it's really hard to teach air support, yeah, because everybody's a little different, but I'm just gonna give you guys some, um, some tips on breathing, um, just some different little exercises you can do to kind of, um, <laughs> some different exercises you can do to improve your uh, lung capacity, breathing, air support, and everything while you play. And so, um, it, you know, if you log in and um, if you just logged in, thanks to you guys for joining. Um, I'd like everybody to get their instruments out and grab a straw if you have one. Um, and if you're cool like um, Eileen, um, you know, grab your reusable straw. Um, I'm not that cool yet, um, but I'm getting there. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, so the main thing that everybody really just needs to think about is building up their air support system from the ground up, from the bottom up. So um, let's see, so got my little notes here. Um, so whenever I'm playing with a really good sound, um, my core is engaged. And when I say my core, I'm talking about, you know, down here, like my, my air support system is what I like to call that in my head. Um, so if this part of your body is engaged when you play, it'll make it a lot easier to do everything else. And all of these things are related. So you have your you have your belly, you know, you have your um, lower abdominal muscles, which are gently engaged. And as you work your way up through, um, you know, through the body, you know, you have your diaphragm, which is an involuntary muscle, um, but it still is part of the whole air support and breathing process, right? Um, and then you obviously, you have your lungs and your chest, um, which is really important too, in that it must remain very relaxed as well as your throat. Then if you travel all the way up through your mouth, um, your oral cavity shape really determines also um, the quality of sound that you're producing. So, um, you know, if you play with a higher tongue position, like shh or or in an E kind of position, you're gonna get a much faster stream of air. Um, and all of these things are related. And then if you go right to the front, your embouchure, um, as we all know, plays a big role in your sound as well. But it really won't matter if you have, you know, the most perfect embouchure in the history of the world. If none of this stuff is working, this <laughs> won't matter because it's not, it's not gonna sound good. Um, so, <clears throat> Um, yeah, so that, that's my first thing, kind of, you know, bringing everyone's attention to the steps involved in making a good sound. Now, you know, thinking about what your abdominal muscles are doing or your diaphragm is doing or your lungs are doing, like, that's not really going to help you that much. Um, that's as bad as trying to play tennis and think about every single little thing that's happening. So all of the things that we do, it's to kind of help 
it's to help you produce a better sound and so you have to allow your um your ear to guide you and you know if you're not completely sure about you know what sounds good or what doesn't um you know find some recordings um listen to live streams of some great clarinet players um i think andy ottensommer just did a live stream concert um it might still be going on um so don't leave me you could probably watch that later um but <laughs> um uh, anyway so that can give you a good idea of what sounds good and um then you can in your own practice and lessons and things kind of aim to try to sound more like what you have in your mind. Um, good, so um, let's first try all doing a little breathing exercise using the straw. So if you all have your straws handy and your clarinets ready to go, um, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this. So I'm gonna grab a metronome. And um, those of you in my studio, some of you I may have done this with uh, this week. Um, so thank you for that, um, reminding me that this is a thing we can do. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna set the metronome to 60. And I want everybody to take a full deep breath in through the straw using four counts. So I'll count you off. And after the four count breath in, um, I'd like you all to breathe out for four counts as well. And we'll repeat this uh, four different times, okay? So in for four, out for four. Now you wanna make sure that you fill up your lungs all the way when you do this. And you also wanna make sure you get rid of all of your air while you do this as well. So um, you will probably feel as you're exhaling your core engaged a little bit while you're trying to exhale all of your air all of, at once. So that's, that's your air support down there at work, right? Blowing against the resistance of the straw. <clears throat> and we breathe in through the straw um, so that we can monitor how much air we're taking in all at once. Um, and so we can actually feel our lungs filling up completely. So if you breathe in slowly, um, that's what these things are for. I'll show you that in a moment, but um, breathing in slowly is very important. Okay, so we've got metronome sex set to 60. I don't know if, um, if you guys can hear that. Um, so maybe I'll, cause the microphone is kind of directional, um, but we're gonna try. Okay, so one, two, Ready, and. All right, so hopefully none of you actually got lightheaded in doing this exercise. Um, but if you did, um, you know, um, I don't know, I'm sorry, uh, don't faint. Um, so anyway, so let's try this now. We're just gonna play um, a low C together and we're gonna breathe in very slowly, monitoring our breath um, so that we don't take in, uh, or so that we take in just enough air um, and fill, oh wait, sorry, I got distracted by a comment. Okay, anyway, so um, when we breathe in, we're gonna play low C together and um, breathe in slowly so that you can fill your lungs up completely with air. Um, and yeah, let's try this. Frogmaster, welcome to the party. Go get your straw. All right, cool. Um, anyway, so, Let's, uh, let's do this. So we're gonna breathe in for four and then we're just gonna hold out a low C until we're totally out of air. So ready and in. <laughs> Oh my 
my god, Shiree. Yeah, that's Shiree, guys. I love her. She's great. All right, cool. Um, so let's see. Um, let's try that again, and we're gonna work our way up through um, the C major scale, just nice and slow. And this time, we're only gonna take two beats. So you know, just think about this is sixty BPM. So this is like um, taking a two-second breath. Um, and I don't know, you know, how many master classes and, and stuff you guys like to watch um, on YouTube, but there's one uh, with Anthony McGill working with a student, and um, I just really love how he, um, you know, it's very simple, but he's like, your normal breath is, but your, your clarinet breath is very deep. Um, so let's try taking a two second breath in, really filling up from the bottom up and we'll do a two octave C major scale and we're gonna do we're gonna do it in half notes so we'll do ready and <sighs> Hopefully that felt a little bit better to you guys. Um, so that's one of the little breathing exercises that I recommend. Um, another thing, so if you guys have one of these, um, another way you can test, um, you know, just the feeling of really having a nice full deep breath of air is um, doing, you know, little breath exercises with one of these. Um, so a lot of times this is given to um, hospital patients after they've been um, under surgery um, and it kind of helps them clear out any of the fluid left in their lungs. So if you, if you do this, um, you know, you may get, have a little bit of a cough afterwards and that's okay. It's not anything serious. That's what it's supposed to do, get you to really fill up your lungs. So the idea behind this, so if you don't know how to work one of these, um, you actually um, try to, you're, you're just monitoring how much air you're taking in in a single breath. And the goal is to, you know, try to get it all the way up to the top. So um, if you can see this, oops, let's see, there we go, it's kind of blurry. Um, it says to keep the indicator between these two lines right here. And um, just like we were saying earlier with the straw thing, you want to take a breath in slowly when you're doing breathing exercises so that you can really feel up your lungs and kind of feel how that feels. So we're going to do this and yeah, ho hopefully this is the, this is my best so far, but that was like, I don't know, a while ago. So I haven't done this in a while. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Oh yeah. And another thing is you can, if you get rid of all of the old air in your lungs, it'll really help out how much you can fill up. So Okay, I'm gonna do it one more. I'm gonna get it to the top. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try this one more time and if I, if I can't get it up to the 4,000, we're just gonna move on. Um, here we go. Okay, it's back at the bottom now. Get all the old air out. <sighs> okay, well, one mark below 4,000. That's the best I can do right now. Oh, well, guess I need to practice. Um, so, um, so that's one thing you can do, and actually, that's really nice. If you're feeling kind of nervous, doing slow breathing exercises like that um, can like kind of help alleviate some nerves. Can you can you tell I was a little nervous? Um, anyway, <laughs> so 
Um, yeah, so that's, that's um, one little thing you can do. Um, now, um, let's see. Just there. Okay, so um, now these are all breathing exercises, which of course um, can help you just improve, um, you know, how much air you're taking in and how much air you're blowing. Um, but the speed of your air really matters. And um, so you want to make sure you're blowing with fast air. And one of my teachers, um, her favorite, or one of my former teachers' favorite uh, syllable sound, I guess, to mimic is so hopefully that didn't distort on the microphone too much. So if you imagine that you're shushing, so you can actually do little breathing exercises like this now without the straw. So if you get all the old air out of your lungs, breathe in, fill everything up. You can actually mimic that sound uh, with that oral cavity in your instrument and get a much clearer, much more focused sound. Um, so here in the United States, we tend to um, play with higher tongue position, and there are various other countries around the world as well. So um, it really just depends on you know the pedagogical tradition that your teacher is teaching you. So. Um, Anyway, so th that's uh, what I teach, is the higher tongue position, that shh kind of air. Um, so, let's see. Um, so you can try that, um, you know, just doing your C major scale, shh, making sure everything is lined up where it's supposed to be. And another thing that actually really makes a difference is making sure your teeth are lined up when you play. Um, I have a big overbite, so that um, you know means I have to bring my jaw toward the mouthpiece uh, a little bit, um, a little bit more than the average person. So a lot of people, a lot of us already have overbites. So um, just a little bit of nudge from the jaw will kind of help the leverage, and that all plays a role in your air as well. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna try that. So you line up your teeth like this, and then. And then you breathe in and exhale with that shh kind of sound. Um, so you guys should give that a try. High tongue, shh position, and teeth straight up and down when you play. Um, okay, um, so what was I, what, what was I saying? Um, yeah, so this, um, the, the speed of your air is actually, um, determined also by how engaged your core is, and so if you find that you're playing, like, for example, like you're trying to play throat tones or, like, low-range clarinet stuff, like medium-low range, and your sound is kind of airy, um, or a little bit, um, a little bit unclear, um, you know, for example, um, of course, that's just an issue of, like, air not getting to the reed fast enough, um, so if you just imagine that your, um, air is kind of like, your air support is kind of like um, shooting, shooting an arrow. So, you know, you pull it back. And as soon as you're ready for the sound to happen, you just blow. And um, you can imagine, you know, it's like, uh, whoa, oops, I'm sorry. Whoa, got too excited there getting my candle. Um, you can imagine like blowing out a candle. And, you know, if you could do this from a few feet away, it actually looks really impressive in front of your friends. Um, anyway, so um, so if you imagine just kind of um, then you'll get the right kind of sound in your um, uh, in, in all of the range, but especially like throat tones, people just don't like to use a lot of air for throat tones for whatever reason. So
Um, and so the best kind of sound, you'll actually notice um, your core um, being a little bit more engaged in what you're doing. Um, so let's see. I actually wanted to tell a little story. And um, let's see. I think this was with with Sam, if you're still watching this. Um, so I love you, Sam. Uh, a few years ago, um, the teacher from Northeastern uh, North Northeastern Illinois University. Um, she um, she came out to one of the high schools that I teach at, and um, she worked with the students. Um, so at one of these schools, they actually it's a lot of students from my studio right now um, watching, but from that school. But you know, they play solos for a guest uh, clinician, and we spend a lot of time preparing for the for the solo night and everything. And so one of the guest clinicians was the clarinet teacher um, at Northeastern. And um, she's full of all kinds of like fun little tricks and, and tips and things to get you know students to do certain things. And um, she kind of used um, one of my students as an example of air support. And um, she did this thing where um, she actually had them stand up and I think they, I think um, from what I remember, I think she had them just kind of jam the bell of their instrument into her abdomen. So like, you know, they were standing like, kind of like, like this. And uh, there we go. Um, they were kind of standing like that. And then she played a little bit. And when she started playing, boom, like, like you, you couldn't get through her core. Um, while she was playing. And so um, I think it was a good demonstration of um, keeping your core engaged without overstraining. So like you don't want to like play and like stick your belly out or anything um, because that um, is going to cause certain other issues and you don't want to like, you know, suck in or anything like that. You just want it to be engaged as if somebody's like, um, trying to poke you in the belly. So um, I'll just play, let's see, I'll just play like an open G and you'll hear the difference in sound between the core being engaged and it being not engaged. So um, one of the things you can do when you practice is try to maintain um, that beautiful sound that you can get when your core is engaged um, at all dynamic levels. And so, um, you know, one of the things that I was taught and one of the things that I'll mention occasionally to my students, uh, soft playing requires just as much and perhaps even more air support than loud playing because it's such um, a delicate sort of, um, you know, dynamic. Um, so, uh, yeah, generally clarinet playing is just very difficult if you want to do it really well. Um, so, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, and the last thing is when we were talking about air just kind of shooting out, um, my word of the week, <laughs> as everyone has known from lessons this week, um, has been velocity. So you want to make sure you play with high velocity air. And um, for whatever reason, that's really helped me and a bunch of my students just kind of get into the mindset of playing with the right kind of air, just <laughs> shooting out. And the velocity has to happen from the moment you want the sound to come out. So, you know, we don't want to be like a car accelerating. We want to be like the Mr. Freeze ride at Six Flags that just shoots out a million miles per hour. All right, cool. So eh, I think I've pretty much covered everything. Um, I have found that practicing legato is one of the best ways to improve air support because um, you have no choice but to blow. And as I mentioned in the video I posted yesterday, I think, um, you know, true legato 
is is very difficult to do because you have to maintain that really smooth constant stream of air all the way through the line that you're playing so be sure to check the video out um, about three quarters of the way through that video I actually have the warm-up up on the screen but this is a really great legato exercise but like you can I mean you can turn any sort of like little etude or scale or whatever Albert scales into um, a legato exercise <sighs> Thanks, Colin. Um, yeah, so uh, another place that I, uh, let's see, another place I really like to do little legato exercises from, and you guys hear these all the time in my videos because they're just so cute, um, from the Krebs book. Um, yeah, and this is, this is in public domain. I think it's like, it's out of print now, so you know, you can download it anywhere, um, but they're so pretty, and I don't like actually playing them super fast. I like playing them beautifully and accurately in legato, so like number 10, you hear me play it all the time, but I just, I just love it. Those little exercises, they're short. Uh, oh my God, Dan. Um, so I would <laughs> recommend the um, Krebs exercises. Um, you know, if you just want short, fun, little uh, legato exercises. Um, yeah, so you really only have to think about two things when you want to play with better air support. Um, Fill up your lungs and blow faster air, and you'll be great. Um, this also applies to staccato, which will have to be in a live stream video at some other time, or maybe just a normal YouTube video. Um, so I hope you guys found this helpful and useful. Um, let's see, before we go, do you guys have any questions for me? And I guess there's a little bit of a delay, so I'm just going to sit here awkwardly for a couple moments while um, questions roll in. And how to play clarinet with a herring is, I, I, you know, I don't know. I've never tried it, so um, uh, I, I have no solution for that. Um, but if someone could do that little herring dance... Um, with their clarinet and send it to me, I will laugh really hard. Um, just do it safely and make sure you're social distancing. Okay. <laughs> um, great. Yeah, cool. Actually, um, I did just think of one question that a viewer asked um, recently about... Um, air support in etude number 14. I think a bunch of you guys are working on this right now for, um, oh, thanks, Roy. Um, yeah, from, they're doing it for ILMEA. Um, uh, etude number 14 from the Rose Book. So I did do a um, video tutorial on this in 2014. So you guys should check it out. There are actually two videos of it and um, it's kind of goofy, but it's the content is relevant in that video. Um, I might do another video of this one because um, I like it a lot more now than I used to. Um, but the main thing, the main problem with this one is that all of these notes going over the break that you have to articulate. Oh, check it out. T. <laughs> my, my old um, markings from back in the day. 
um yeah all these notes going over the break that you have to articulate um I used to hate this one because I just couldn't get those to sound good without a grunt coming out um so the main thing is if you have your core engaged and you have the air ready to go when you go to tongue then you won't have to worry too much about um you won't have to think too hard about the air support because it'll already be ready so one way you can actually practice having air support ready to go before um before playing is to take your straw and if you if you pinch the end so that no air can get out and you blow into it as hard as you can you'll kind of feel everything expand you'll feel um, all of the air pressure in the front of your face um, and that's essentially what you have to do when you go to tongue notes so you have to have the air ready to go before you even play so one of the things is to make sure you're actually, whoa, that's good. Okay, make sure you're actually tonguing on this part of the reed instead of plugging up the reed like this. And you don't want to use the middle of the, your tongue and actually close everything off, right? So if you aim for right below the tip of the reed and just kind of aim your taste buds right there, then you can have everything ready to go. So before I even play, the hardest one for me was always like, I'll do I'll do a B, B right over the break, because that one's kind of tough, right? So you have your air ready to go, everything lined up, right? So you can see, like, before any sound comes out, I'm all, like, expanded and ready to go. So then when I let go of the reed, um, so if you watch my video on articulation on clarinet, the visualization of imagining you're just like a balloon <sighs> releasing the air that'll keep the air pressure um you know nice and strong at the front of your mouth so when you release the reed the sound will be right there you know And then you can get a really clear sound right from the beginning of every note that you articulate. Um, so again, it's really hard actually to teach this some of these things um, over a video um, simply because um, I haven't been able to, you know, work with you. I, actually, a lot of you I have been working on uh, working with individually. Um, but if you're if you're tuning in and you're not actually in my studio right now. Um, you know, make sure you go take private lessons with somebody. Um, there are lots of teachers doing lessons online right now. So you kind of have your choice of tons of people out there. Um, and um, yeah, just like regular coaching once a week is, is just kind of like the best way you can get better. But in the meantime, I'm glad that my videos have been able to help you guys out. Um, and least of all, um, give you some things to think about and to test out on your own. So if you guys have any more questions, you know where to find me. Um, but for now, thank you all so much for watching. And as always, happy practicing. Oh, I have to turn this off.